This is how you make a simple pop-out portrait effect in Photoshop. All right, so once you have your portrait open with a subject that's facing the front, preferably, then just go over to your image layer, click on the lock to unlock it, double click and name it. So I'm gonna name this profile pick. Then we're gonna go down to this little half circle thing, add an adjustment layer, which is a solid color. And it's gonna cover up your whole image here. Let's just slide it to white for now. You can pick a different color later. Click OK and then grab it, like click on it and drag it below the profile pick. So it's in the background and profile pick is in the foreground. Then we're gonna click on our profile pick, head over to the fourth tool down here, which is the quick selection tool. If you don't see it, right click, quick selection tool right there. And then just click on select subject. This is gonna do a pretty good job of making a selection of your subject, but you might run into a couple things like this. Like you have a protrusion, let's say, sticking out like this then just use the minus here to paint that out and vice versa. If you have like an indent like this, then just use the plus to paint it back in. Once you have your selection looking pretty good, go up and click on select and mask. That's going to bring you into this. You, there's a whole bunch of things you can do in here. If you want to know more about making your selection even better, then look in the description below. There's a video linked in there that'll help you out. For me, I'm just going to bump the radius a bit, smooth it a bit, shift the edge back a little bit and then change the output from selection to new layer with layer mask and click OK. And as you can see, that adds a new layer right here called profile pick copy with a mask on it. Everything that's white on the mask is what we still see. Everything that's in black is what's been covered up or taken away. And the original picture is still right here as well. So if you still need to make other adjustments, like if I zoom in here, you can see that there's some kind of like dents in his jacket there. And then on this side, there's like a little bit of extra here maybe. Then click on your mask, not on the thumbnail part, on the mask. Use a brush. Use black to essentially erase and white to bring back. So if I go to black and I change my brush size here, I'm going to keep it at 80%, but I'm going to drop the size down a bit. Opacity to 100, flow at 100. And I'm just, you can see that if there was extra, you could erase. Like I can kind of smooth that little part out right there. And if there's dents in it, then maybe I flick it to white and I'm gonna bring some of this back. So some of this jacket was kind of missing there. I'm gonna bring those pieces back to kind of smooth that out. And you know, maybe up here, I might use black to kind of smooth, you know, his face out there. There was kind of like those dents and stuff right there. Now that you've dealt with everything on the mask to clean it up and make it look nice, we're just gonna click back on our profile pic, so the one that we can't see, like the eyeball is not clicked here. And we're gonna go over to our shape tools here. So mine's on the ellipse. If you don't see the ellipse, you might be seeing rectangle, just right click and select ellipse. Go up to fill, pick any color you want. I'm just gonna pick black. For stroke, make sure it's this one with the line through it so there's no stroke and nothing else here really matters. So we can just click and then hold shift, click in the top kind of left up here and make your shape. So I'm gonna make my circle maybe about that size. You can always change the size later. It'll appear behind this image, but above profile pic. That's why we clicked on this one, so it went above. Then we're just gonna to go to our move tool and slide it into place. Don't bring it too low. You're gonna see at the very bottom, there's that pink line that shows up. That means the circle is right at the bottom of the image. Don't go beyond that. So bring it back up from that. Once you have it in place, just click on the top layer, the profile pic copy layer with the mask right click on that layer and then select create clipping mask. And you can see that that's gonna put the image just inside the circle and nothing else around it's gonna show up because this little arrow means put this layer inside this layer in terms of what's visible. But obviously we're missing the head so we gotta bring that back. So to do that, make sure you're still selected on profile pick copy and go command or control J to make a copy. That's gonna bring a full copy that's not a clipping mask, just a regular layer with the mask on it. But if we remember from what we do with a mask on this one, we can now use black to erase this extra stuff around. Whoops, I didn't wanna move that. We're gonna use black to erase everything else. So I'm gonna to go to my brush. I'm gonna make sure it's black in the foreground here. I'm gonna make it bigger. And then while I'm on the mask, not on the thumbnail, on the mask, I'm just gonna paint everything around the circle. And you don't even have to take your time. Like you don't have to find the edges of the circle. You can just go crazy and erase everything really quick. The reason why 
is because everything we erase on here, you can see I can go erase all of this. It doesn't really matter because this image, at least what's visible in terms of the circle here, is going to be still visible underneath. So they're kind of layered on top of each other, which means they kind of look like they're one image anyway. At this point, we're done the basic effect and we're ready to add all of our final touches. So the first one we're going to do is to change your background if you want. So if you do want to change the color, just double click on this box. It'll open up the color picker and you can mess with it and change it however you want. I'm going to keep mine at white, but you can change it right there if you want. Next is going to be to just add a drop shadow to the ellipse. So go to your ellipse layer, go to the very right over here and double click. That'll bring up the layer style menu and you can just click on the word drop shadow right here. For me, I'm going to keep it at black, but you can change to whatever color you want. I think opacity around 50% works good. Angle anywhere between 70 and 80% I think is good. It kind of you know, makes it the shadow go underneath, but to the left a little bit. For distance, spread, and size, I just started like this. I dropped them all down. I moved spread up a bit. I moved size up even more. And then I just slowly moved the distance until I got the look that I wanted. So somewhere around 50 for me was good. I just want that shadow like that. If you want also in here, you can add a stroke. So I'm going to click on the word stroke here and you can see that the outline goes there. This is to change the size. Uh, position. I'm going to leave it at outside. You can change it to inside or center. And you can obviously change the color right here to, you know, whatever you want as well. I'm going to not have a stroke, so I'm going to uncheck that. But I'm going to keep the drop shadow and click OK. And then the final, final thing is to add a color or gradient to the black ellipse. So make sure, you're, again, you're selected on the ellipse layer. Go down to the little half circle thing for your adjustments. Click on it. If you want a solid color, just select solid color and you can pick whatever you want in there. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to hide that for now. And if you want a gradient, then just click on here and go up to gradient instead. And you're going to see that in this case, nothing really happened right away because we have to click on this gradient right here. And we can either pick a preset and or we can customize our own down here. So for a preset, let's say I go into purples, you can you know click on anything here and it'll show up. You can see kind of what it looks like. You can also mess with these boxes. So right now we're only kind of seeing the middle of this gradient. So if we slide these over towards the middle, you're going to start seeing you know more of that actual gradient show up. Um, if you want to customize it, I'm just going to go back to basics and click one here. So to customize it, if you click the bottom two are your colors. So if I click on this one and click here, I can pick whatever color I want. So let's say I wanted a little bit more of a dark yellowy orange on one side and then on this side I'm going to pick you know more of a vibrant kind of white yellow over there and click OK. If you wanted to add other colors you just click and add a box and then again click and click and pick whatever color you want in there. If you want to get rid of colors just click and drag them out. So right now you can see this isn't great like from this color to this color we don't really see much. So I could drag these in to make it more pronounced like in the middle there. But you can also, if you just click OK, you can, once you do that, you can just click here now and drag this. So you can kind of move the gradient along here. So the higher I go, the more we're seeing this side. And when I drag down, the more we're seeing this side. But you can also change the scale here. So if I click and drag to the left all the way, you're going to see that that's where the transition is happening and it's very harsh when the scale's at one. So now I can click and kind of drag it to where I want the transition to happen. So maybe right there. And then I'll go back to scale, click and start slowly dragging to the right. So I can really control how that gradient looks in the background there. If you want to flip it, you can also change the angle here, go left to right, right to left, you know, whatever. Or you can even just click reverse to have the, you know, this side on top and then this side on the bottom or flip it back to what it was. When you're good with your gradient, then just click OK. And then I guess the last thing to deal with is whether you like the size of the circle and where your subject is placed within the circle. So to mess with that, I'm just going to deal with the ellipse. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go Command or Control T to resize it. I think this is just maybe a little bit too big. So I'm just going to maybe shrink it down a little bit, maybe to like there. I'm going to click check when I'm good. 
and then you just have to double check like you can see right here I have now a little part that's sticking out so if you have that then you just have to go back to your profile pick two layer click on the mask go back to a brush make sure it's black and just paint it out again and that's it that's how you make a very simple pop out portrait effect in Photoshop if you want to learn how to do other pop up or pop out Photoshop effects then make sure to watch one of the videos that's on the screen right now.